Hello my lovely friends! My name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you some age gap romance recommendations. First off, I want to just start out with, don't we just love the pink look? <laughs> Everything's pink. Um, my new sweatshirt is pink. This is from Hello Lovely Box by the way. Um, I have a discount code down below if you want a sweatshirt exactly like this or one similar to it. Um, they have a bunch of different designs. You can use the code AVA15 to get 15% off your order. Um, all the information is down below as well as like the link to their stuff. But it says historical romance. And then it says Reader's Club. So historical romance Reader's Club. And um, it says, <laughs> because rapes, dukes, and scoundrels. Because we all love them. <laughs> um, and then also the scrunchie is also from them. Isn't that amazing? So cute. I got it in their Galentine's box. I unboxed it on my channel a couple of videos ago. I'll link it down below. And then um, I just love these earrings. <laughs> Super cute. And my nails too. Didn't even notice my nails. Everything's pink. Love it. So age gap romances. Everyone loves a good age gap or most people love a good age gap i don't want to pigeonhole anybody so i have made this video before so if you want more recommendations i'll link down below my first recommendation video for this i made it i believe at the beginning of 2021 so it's been a whole year i've read a bunch of age gap romances some of these may be new to y'all most of them probably not if you're familiar with the subgenre but i just have a bunch of Rex today, so let me dive right on into them. One of the authors that I absolutely adore that is mainly focused on age gap romances is Jessica Kane. She writes a lot of hot and fun novellas, and so I thought I'd talk about three with y'all right now. First is an all-time favorite of mine. <laughs> you wouldn't think that a novella is an all-time favorite, but king-sized totally is. This one is just so stinking good. So this one is about our heroine who is a queen. She just became a queen because her parents just passed. I believe she's 18 and our hero in here is way older than her and he's one of her many guards that is tasked to protect her. And so when her parents pass away, she is crying in her room and all of her guards are standing outside her room protecting her. And he's like, is no one gonna go in that room and like console this woman? She's all alone, all by herself. I feel horrible that she doesn't have anybody to like lean on right now. And so he goes in the room, basically comforts her, and she's very grateful for him. And then she starts to notice him, and she sees him in a whole different light, and then they uh, get together. <laughs> um, it's super fun. I just love this one. This is probably... Ooh, is it my favorite Jessica Kane? It's one of my favorite Jessica Kane books. So I love this one so much. As well as Queen Sized. This one and King Sized kind of like take place in kind of like a medieval setting. I don't want to say it's fantasy, um, but it's also not historical. I don't know how to describe it, but it's not set during our time. So our heroine here, Gwen. I love Gwen. <laughs> She's a plus size heroine and totally embraces her curves. Love it. And she is trying to find a husband during, I believe it's called the husband games or the wife games or something along those lines. Anyway, she's trying to find a husband because her she's trying to take care of her siblings and they don't have any money. And so she needs to marry somebody who has money. And so there's something called these games where these women will do and perform these tasks and men will watch them do these tasks and at the end of the games, they will propose to a woman, most of them will. Um, so like one of them is how far can you um, carry two giant pails of water, like to show how strong you are, like stuff like that. King Corbet, 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 I don't know. Um, <laughs> he instantly notices Gwen and is totally, totally, totally obsessed with her. However, he has sworn never to marry. Um, and so he's like, you'll be my mistress. Come on, come be my mistress. And she's like, no, I need to marry for money. Like I need this money to help support my family. And if I'm your mistress, I will never get a guarantee that I will have security in your life. He kind of like falls for her while also realizing that marriage isn't necessarily shackles because that's what he assumes it is. Again, another Jessica Kane. That's just great. I love this one. And the last Jessica Kane I want to mention is Husky. So this is the romance between Parker and Dawes. Parker is a fashion designer about to uh, be like revealed in New York City's Fashion Week. However, she's kind of uninspired at the moment and she's not really liking any of the designs that she's making. So then she decides to like take a walk to like get a break, clear the air, you know? And she walks into this bar and she sees Dawes and it's instantly like, ooh, this man is very attractive. 
I want to make clothes for him. And so she tries to convince him to come be her model in her new fashion show. And um, so good. So good. I love this one. Again, there is an age gap. She is quite younger than he is. I believe he also used to be a bodyguard. Um, so he's not used to the fashion lifestyle at all. <laughs> I just love this one. Super hot, super fun. Yes. We have a staple in the age gap romance wrecks. We have Your Dad Will Do by Katie Robert. This is the well-beloved trope of dating your ex's father. <laughs> so our heroine in here, she catches her, I think it's her fiance or her boyfriend. I don't remember if He's her fiance or not. Anyway, she catches her significant other cheating on her. And so she decides to get back at him by showing up on his dad's doorstep and trying to seduce him. She has always had a, a crush on him and thought he was very attractive. So she thinks this is like a win-win scenario. And so it's about them spending this time together and possibly exploring their relationship even more. I love this one. I wish, oh, Oreo decided to grace us with this present. And he... He, he wanted to eat in the window. I gotta fix the window for him now. He want, oh, bless you. <laughs> there we go, I opened the window for him and that's what he wanted. <laughs> he would bug me the whole time if I didn't. Anyway, uh, this one is a very big staple in the romance community. It's very fun, very hot. <laughs> and obviously there is the age gap here because she is the same age as his son, so take with that what you will. <laughs> Next I have Voyeur by Fiona Cole. This is another big staple amongst age gap readers. This relationship, very interesting. So our heroine in here, she's in college. I don't remember what her age is, but she's in college at some year. Don't know. So let's say she's in between the ages of 18 and 22. She needs money for tuition. By some means, she does not have the money for tuition anymore. So her best friend tells her about this club that has job openings that um, is a certain type of club, if you get what I'm saying. And um, she <laughs> can get paid to do things with certain people or just do things by herself and have people watch, you know? And so um, she decides to take up the job to get some more cash. And everything is consensual, by the way. Nothing sketchy going on in that department. Our hero here is a uh, watcher of this club, is a member of this club. And so he comes to watch stuff and you know the deal. Um, and so then one day he it's like sees our heroine doing stuff and is like utterly intrigued by her and it's like ooh, i like this woman and so he comes only to like watch this one person and becomes kind of obsessed but there's something else going on because he's a professor at the same college that our heroine goes to first day of classes there she is sitting in one of the seats that he is a teacher in so <laughs> um it's very interesting. There's a lot of um, past trauma in our hero's life that he is trying to work through. So please be aware of the trigger warnings and I recommend looking those up. I haven't read any more in this series, but I definitely want to. But the age gap aspect in here was very interesting and their whole relationship secret identity kind of thing was very intriguing to read about as well. <laughs> Next, I have All He Wants for Christmas by Katie Wilde. I know this is a Christmas romance, but you don't need to read it during Christmas time. Like it's not overly Christmas related. It just takes place in December, honestly. So our hero in here, Cole, is a detective. And a couple months ago, he was shot and he almost died. But there was a woman who he claims is his guardian angel who saved him and was able to stop the bleeding until the paramedics came. And he never found out who this woman was, but he just sees her as this guardian angel in his life. And so then his boss or the governor, I don't remember who it is, but a guy higher up than Cole um, has this daughter and he wants Cole to keep an eye on her um, because she's about to move into her very first apartment and he makes sure that the apartment is in the same building as Cole because he kind of wants Cole to look out for her, protect her, all this stuff. And Cole is like reluctant to and he's like, oh, whatever. And then one day he finally glimpses this woman and is like, that woman looks a lot like the woman who saved my life. And yeah, there's a very big age gap in here because she's just now moving out of her parents' house. She's, um, either in her late teens or early 20s, obviously of age, but 
uh, there is an age gap in here and there's also a forbiddenness to it too because her father holds a lot of power over Cole and his position and so Cole doesn't want to lose his job but then he also falls madly in love with this woman so there's a lot of forbiddenness to it as well. Next I have a historical romance. We have Dear Stroke by Elizabeth Hoyt, one of my favorites of last year. I love this one so much. This is the romance between Phoebe and James. So Lady Phoebe is the sister to a duke and she is also blind and so it's very difficult for her to uh, go through society uh, during this time, historical time period, because they did not have the same uh, accommodations and accessibility um, that we do nowadays for people with disabilities. And so her brother just doesn't want her to be taken advantage of or lose her way or anything. And so he hires Captain James Trevelyan to be her bodyguard and to kind of help her navigate through life. Um, and so Phoebe is very upset about this. She doesn't think she needs a babysitter. She just sees James Trevelyan as a babysitter. But the moment that James sees Phoebe, he is in love with her. Like he loves her, but he is way older than her, like way older than her. And he doesn't think that he's good enough for Phoebe. And so Phoebe like finally reluctantly agrees to like, like James, like as a person and get to know him and everything. And once she starts to get to know him, she realizes how amazing this man is. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in love with him too. And so they get to know each other more, spend more time together. And Phoebe tries to convince James, James that she does not care at all about their age difference or the fact that he comes from a lesser born family than her own because her brother's a duke, you know? I just love this book so much. Phoebe and James are perfect for each other and I love the kind of like forbiddenness of the age gap but it didn't really matter in the end literally at all so um I always I always love that love perseveres <laughs> next I have a Christina Lauren we have beautiful player this is book number three in the beautiful bastard series all of their books can be read as a standalone besides their little novellas a part of this series however I recommend reading them in order because you meet these characters previously and you kind of get to know them a little bit more if you read them read about them in the previous books, you know? So you have met Hannah and Will, who are the main characters in the story in the previous books. So Hannah in here, she is a, uh, what's the word for it? She never takes a break from her work. She's a workaholic, there you go. She's a very big workaholic. And um, I believe she's a scientist. She works in a lab and her brother and her dad kind of have like an intervention with her. And it's like, hey, uh, you're not doing anything besides working and we think you need a life. You need to get a life. <laughs> um, and so she lives, I believe in New York, if I'm not mistaken, New York or Chicago, one of those two big cities. Her father and dad don't live there. And so they're like, telling her how they know of someone that does live there and they think that she should call him up and maybe hang out, find a friend, you know? And so the guy in question, his name is Will, and he's actually her brother's best friend. Um, so when her brother was in college, he would bring his best friend Will home with him over winter break and summer break sometimes to help work on their family's property and for his, for his dad's business and everything. So Hannah got to see a lot of Will growing up, I think she was like 10, 9, 11 when they were in college. And so there's a big age gap here. And she always had a little crush on Will. And so right when her and Will like decide to like meet up and like hang out or whatever, just like become friends, you know, um, there's no romantic thing at all with them. Right from the moment they see each other, like for Hannah, like old feelings start to arise. And for Will, he starts to like see her as a woman instead of this little kid who you should just follow him around. This one is just so good. It's one of my favorite Christina Lauren books for sure. I love a good brother's best friend if it's done correctly. And I feel like this one definitely was. Another historical romance for you is Return of the Rogue by Donna Fletcher. This is the first book in the Sinclair Brothers series and I recommend all the books in the series. It's so good. There's four books following uh, four brothers each book is about a different brother falling in love. Oh, so good. They're Highlander romances. So the age gap in this one is a big age gap. I don't know the exact number, but it's quite large because the first scene that you read about this book is about Honora. Honora is our heroine's name. Um, she's like seven or eight and I think she either falls off a horse or gets lost in the woods or something. By some means, she's alone in the Highlands. Our heroine here is from a neighboring clan. His name is Cavan and he's the eldest Sinclair brother. The beginning of this book is when she's a young girl and he ends up either saving her or something. Like he's a grown man. 
when he does this, by the way. Uh, you get to witness through Honor's eyes that she's a little girl, this grown man, save her. And uh, then she finds out that she is destined to marry one of the Sinclair brothers to have an alliance with them. And so when she comes of age, she's gonna go marry one of the Sinclair brothers. Like she's tasked to marry the um, second eldest brother because the eldest brother, Kevin, the hero of this book, is actually at war. And then so like they need an alliance fast. So she's just gonna marry the second oldest brother, whatever. Even though the alliance was with the eldest brother, but no one can get a hold of the eldest brother. So she's gonna marry the second one. <laughs> and so she's fine with this because she became very close friends with the second brother. She considers him a friend. And then on the day of her wedding, kind of like when everyone's like, does anyone object to the marriage? Cavan walks in and is like, what is going on? And um, he doesn't want to get married, but the contract for their alliance clearly states that she has to marry the eldest brother who is present. And so then she has to marry Cavan instead and she is not happy about that. They're very much enemies and they have to get married together. And um, this is about them navigating their relationship and all that jazz that comes with a historical romance with enemies to lovers. I love this one so much. It's so good. The rest of the series is amazing. My favorites in the series are book three and four because they're just perfection. So um, if you want to get into a good historical romance series, check this series out, please. And the last one I want to mention is Just a Heartbeat Away by Carbest Stone. This was one of my favorites of last year as well. Oh, it's so good. Um, this, if you love slow burn romances, this is definitely a slow burn. You also wouldn't think that this one gets spicy, but it does. Like based on the cover, you wouldn't think that it's spicy, but it is. This is about Sebastian and Via. Sebastian is in his 40s when Via is, I believe, 24. And the age gap does play kind of like a big role in their relationship or to Sebastian it does at least. Sebastian has a young son named Maddie. And at the beginning of this book, Sebastian becomes a widower. Widow, widower? Is widow only for women? Let me know. Is women for widow and the widower is a man? I don't know. Anyway, he his wife unfortunately passed away and he does not know how to navigate taking care of Maddie by himself. And he doesn't mean to, but he's neglecting his son. Like he doesn't mean to, he loves his son, but he doesn't know how to be a single parent. Via is Maddie's kindergarten teacher. And she realizes that Sebastian is struggling. And so during a parent-teacher conference, she gives him the tools and resources and lists of things that he needs to help take care of his son in a more effective way. And he really takes her advice to heart and really appreciates her for that. And so it's years later, they're not at that same school anymore. Maddie goes to a new school and Sebastian is very much involved in his life. He kind of like is involved in the school a lot. Like he is on lunch duty a lot. And so Via decides to become a school counselor at this school. And so they are forced to see each other again and get to know each other and they end up falling in love. <laughs> um, there's a few complications though, because at the beginning of this book, Via is in a relationship. The guy sucks though, don't like him. Um, and Sebastian is very interested in Via, but she's in a relationship and she is like over 20 years younger than him, you know? And he's like, no one that age is gonna want to be with me who has a lot of baggage. I'm way older than them. I don't want to spend every night partying. I just want to be a good father to my son and have an amazing family and have a wife who wants to be in that life with me. And little does he know that Via wants all those things. She wants a husband. She wants kids. She wants that married life. And just because she's 24, that doesn't mean she wants to party all night with her friends. Like she wants a secure, stable life hopefully with Sebastian. <laughs> this one's just so good. The slow burn, the tension, the angst, amazing. I really recommend this one. It's a great age gap. So there you have it. Those are my age gap romance recommendations. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, or if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, leave me a green heart emoji down in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.